Hello everyone, this is your comment real Soviet Bear speaking, and I'm here to give you a status update, year in review, whatever you want to call it. Um, the game in the background is getting over it with Ben and Fadi, and I'm using it because it's a metaphor for uh, generally this entire year for me, but also because uh, it's a pretty decent game. Um, if you can get into the right mindset and be thick-headed, it's, I, I recommend playing it, it's one of my favorite things this year. Anyway, um, I'll be going over a ton of stuff, so if there's anything that doesn't interest you, just open the video description and just skip to the parts that you want to hear about. Um, I'm going over the entire year, so there's no way to make this video short, I think. Okay, so first off, the name change. Um, so, the channel was previously called Score Attack. Um, as you know, uh, the channel first started with me and Johnny. And then GD joined, after that Johnny left, and then after a while this year GD left. So in the end we just ended up going, or not this year, last year was it, man it's been a while. <clears throat> Basically after GD left I was thinking what to do with the channel. And in the end I decided to just, you know, keep all the stuff this year and just rebrand it to Real Soviet Bear. Uh, the original videos all still credit the people who participated in them, uh, but I didn't want to close down the project, and um, I didn't want to start it with anyone else, so it's a one-man show, and it's probably going to stay a one-man show until further notice. Like that That's not including collaborations for one-off things, but in general, uh, yeah, it's, it seems much easier uh, mentally to just coordinate with myself. And as part of that name change, uh, there was also a visual brand overhaul, um, and I have mostly Super Graffiti to thank for that, uh, who did all the artwork for the channel and for the Twitch channel. Um, I'll mostly focus on this when I talk about the streaming channel later, but because the art is also on the YouTube channel, just thought it was worth mentioning. Okay, let's play So, this year I had two Let's Plays. Um, there was still Overdose, which I did with uh, Loco, Torpetypist, and Iron Chitlin. Um, that was more of a casual sort of thing of basically me recording footage and then all of us just shit-talking the game and life in general and each other. Um, I did that because after the LSD and Fury Let's Play, I just wanted something laid back where I didn't have to think too much. And I also wanted to record something full in advance before even putting up episode 1. That method proved to be very uh, good, and I think when I can do it in the future I will be doing it. I think overall it was a good LP, um, only issue was license tracks, blocking some things that I had to re-upload, but other than that, um, it was fun to do. Um, the other thing I did was the Typing of the Dead Let's Play, which, rather Typing of the Dead Overkill Let's Play, which um, exceeded expectations. Kind of happy for it, but um, uh, I basically the entire process of recording the first episode was me getting idea in the evening. After talking to some people about the game in general, and then me realizing, oh, there's workshop support, and then adding stuff, and then realize there was a uh, sequential narrative, uh, or sequential prompts, I can't remember the exact name, uh, option. So I first thought, like, hey, maybe if I just like do a few placeholders and see if this works, maybe I can get this to work. And after I got working, basically the first episode from idea to recording was between 6 p.m. to... 3 a.m., which was a bad idea because it was Sunday, but anyway, I put it together and it turned out really well. And people, uh, I put it up right away because I want to see if people would like it. People did like it. Um, uh, amazingly so, I, I didn't expect that sort of reaction. I expect mostly people to think it's a dumb idea in a gimmick, but hey, it worked. Everybody liked it. We went through it. There was a lot of padding involved because there's so much you can say about a light gun game, so... I am amazed that I ended up just barely filling up everything without dumb filler. 
Um, it's not in the archive yet, but even now it's it, it has done better than some stuff I have put on the archive. And usually putting stuff on the LP archive is a big viewing boost. So yeah, really happy with it. Some people are happy with it. Um, it seems that this uh, whole high effort shit post avant garde thing is the thing I should be doing because those let's plays get the most traction. And honestly, for a while, I've been, you know, prepping about and trying to figure out what kind of Let's Plays I really want to do. You know, there was like, oh, do I do post-commentary, live commentary, uh, subtitles, heavy editing, no editing. I've tried everything. Um, was trying to figure out what I enjoy. Um, I enjoy this, but that also means that there will be less Let's Plays in the future, which brings me to the next thing, and that is future Let's Play projects. So I know what I'm doing next. I'm not going to spoil it right now. Um, it is going to be a, another high effort thing. Uh, mostly for a another collaborator and also for me trying to like sync up, do a lot of editing um, for this to work. But I think people will like it. I also don't think anybody should expect it before, uh, Jesus, March next year at least. Like I said, like the drawback of doing this high effort stuff is gonna be that's not gonna be common, but hey, we can we can I, I I'm I'm more a quality over quantity type of person, so we could just deal with this. Other projects. Uh so neutral game podcast is a thing. Um it seems people are discovering it. Oh yeah, actually I should probably say what neutral game podcast is. So neutral game podcast is a thing I do with Colin aka 6264 from Skyline Media, um, is a podcast about fighting games, and we try to talk about fighting games in a tone that is approachable to people who have a passing interest in it, so we don't try to go too in-depth and balance tournament stuff, you know, things that everybody else is already covering. Um, since we play a lot of fighting games, we want to just be like, hey, you know, if you have passing interest, if you want to get into fighting games, or if you were into fighting games and dropped out, we kind of want to cover like various topics and make the thing approachable. So it's a monthly podcast. We aren't really doing much to promote it. Um, mostly because there's so much other stuff going on. But by comparison, like you know, the amount we're promoting it and how much traction it's getting, it's, it's pretty good. Um, like relatively speaking. So hopefully we'll be doing this until further notice. I don't know how long the podcast will last, how much steam we'll have. Um, that's so far last of the year, uh, which is honestly more than I expected we had to talk about, but hey, it worked out, so that's really good. I liked doing it, and there's a lot of stuff to cover. So give it a listen, it's on YouTube and, um, on the channel, and it's also on iTunes and on Scanline Media's website, and it's everywhere. Next thing, Twitch channel. Okay, so, much like every body that has done let's plays well almost everybody um i'm kind of moving most of the streaming now because it's um easier to set up easier to do and when you have a day job um that leaves you kind of drained um in a good way not in a bad way um but you know you still need energy even when you do things you like um i've kind of been focusing mostly on it there's a lot of reasons I don't want to go too deep into, but it's generally state of YouTube, uh, generally state of Let's Play, like, I think it's sort of winding down, and the interest for it is winding down, I think people just prefer interacting by a stream now, which is a bit sad, but, you know, that's just how the market goes, nothing is forever. Um... And yeah, just mind you, I, 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 that's not really like a main driving factor for me. Um, it's just, it means that it's harder for me to put my stuff out there. Like back back a few years ago, it was like, oh, there's too much competition. You can't really do anything uh, because people are too busy watching other people's stuff. And like nowadays, it's just like, well, people aren't really watching Let's Plays that much anymore either. Um, at least in the way that I do them in the communities like SA or something awful or the Let's Play Zone do. Um, so yeah, I've been moving most of the streaming, um, that's also where 
most of the visual overhaul has gone by Super Graffiti. Um, one thing I wanted to set out to do was just slowly rotate out all the um, all things, all graphical things that I used that didn't really belong to me. Uh, not in the sense of stolen art, but more in the sense of I don't want to use characters that belong to other games. I don't want to use sprite rips from other games. Um, basically, I want to, if I do something that belongs to a different game or something, it has to be just like a reference to it. Um, there are a few reasons I don't want to do this. Um, first, obviously, the legal issue. I, I know nobody's you know, pursuing whoever for using Super Mario sprites or whichever game sprites in their emotes or channel art. Um, I know that's not a thing yet, but in case it's ever a thing, it's one headache less I have to think about. You know, all you need is just one Twitch rule to change, and then it's just like a massive shuffling about, uh, redoing things. Um, another thing is I don't want to necessarily promote other games in that way. Um, let, let's just give like a, like an example. Like I play Sonic games and I like Sonic games and then let's say I have a Sonic emote because I like Sonic games and then, um, I don't know, a new Sonic game comes out that's really garbage or Sega does something that's really garbage and that I hate. Um, and in general, just weird things happen. Like, I don't know, maybe imagine if I ironically did Awesome Possum for the Mega Drive as my little mascot thing, and then somebody rebooted Awesome Possum, and it was a bad game, and then, you know, what do I do? Do I hate the game? Do I keep the brand? Do I do ironic shit posting? It's just a lot of questions I don't want to bother with. That is why um, everything is going to be just original art. We have, there's a new banner, there's an avatar, um, there's all sorts of little um, channel description images, I don't even know how they're called, headers, I guess. Uh, all the emotes are original. Even I even got um, a uh, like a custom channel notifications animations. Even like even that was like the last like big visual thing uh, I pushed like as a replacement at least because I was using stuff from other games. Um, the only thing right now that's basically still nicked from other games are uh, the sound notifications that I have for. Uh, uh, subscriptions and donations. So that is like the only thing right now and maybe going forward I will replace that as well. In general I'm just I'm just trying to keep this I guess professional and high effort and now that I can kind of afford it I'm, I'm going through with it and trying to make it presentable. As far as the actual channel goes I think at the start of the year there were something like 30, 33 followers, because when we moved away from Headbox to Twitch, we basically lost half our followers. So on, on, on the Headbox, I think when we left, it was like 68 followers, something like that. But I had noticed it had stagnated, and there was writing on the wall that Headbox wasn't going to end up being that good. So Jump Chip took a while uh, to get like the follower base back, but... I think it's ultimately worth it. I mean, just numerically speaking, it's worth it already. Um, my goal for this um, year, sort of for 2017, was to uh, get 100 followers. That was the goal I set out in January. Um, and we broke that fairly quickly. Now the channel is at 250 followers, which is more than double than what I expected, um, which is really good. Um, but, you know, followers don't really mean anything. I've seen channels with thousands of followers and, like, no viewers, so it's mostly about how many concurrent viewers you have. Um, I, I guess, like, the followers is more a reflection of the ratio, but you really want just how many viewers we ha you have, and that went from three on average, three, five on average, to, like, ten? We like, I'm frequently breaking, like, ten concurrent viewers now, um... Which is, you know, uh, by comparison with other big channels and even like other slightly bigger channels of, I know, something awful people, that's like nothing, you know? 
Um, but for me, breaking 10, like sometimes reaching 16, 16 seems to be the new peak for the longest time. It used to be like 12 or 10. So it's doing really well. Um, in my opinion, I, I know it's an uphill thing and I know it's going to take a really long time until, or if I ever, um, get the partner status on Twitch, and I don't really want the partner status for, you know, the moolah, the money, the zenny. Um, what I really want is just to have, like, I, I just have the channel big enough to be able to manage it, but also, like, big enough so it's interesting and I can have emotes. Like, I, I'm kind of hating that, like, all the three emotes that I have, only one is normally accessible to people and everything else is, like, a premium super sub. Um, I kind of want to change that. Um... Yeah, I, I just want people to use emotes because I think the emotes are cute and Super Graffiti does great art. Um, but no, um, I, I, it's mostly, like, I ha this is never going to replace my regular job. And I have my regular job. I'm happy with it. I'm going to, that, that's a career I want to pursue. Um, this is a hobby, but me being me, I want to, like, push every hobby, like, as best as I can. And... You know, if that means, like, streaming another four years with 10 concurrent viewers, then, you know, so be it. Um, I'm, used to, I'm used to being patient and just slowly inching and working towards stuff. But yeah, a good growth on the Twitch channel. Thank you all for supporting that, watching it, and tuning it in. Um, there were a few projects that we've been... Um, uh, that I've been doing. I keep saying we. I like to say we because every, we're all doing this together. Um... But yeah, um, there have been a few projects that I've been doing, um, and well, I'm just going to go over them. Um, first off, Let's Races. So I've been racing a few games with people on my channel. It's mostly been Monolith. Uh, Monolith is, by the way, the best roguelike of 2017, just so you know. Um, so I've been racing that uh, with people organizing hosting races. Um, I, I enjoy it. I would like to do more of it going forward. Um, I guess the biggest issue here is because a lot of people that watch me at least seem to be from the US. I get more US people than uh, uh, European people, uh, according to metrics. And I guess because the time slot I have filled is when people come home from work uh, in the US. But it's not necessarily when people can actually, you know, race, like take part in it. So it's sometimes tricky to get people to sync up. Um, I think that'll get easier going forward as, as you know, there's more people just on the channel. Um, but for now, I might make it a monthly thing um, in the next year. I'm probably going to stick to just Monolith for now um, because that seems to be easiest because otherwise it's going to be like, okay, this month is Monolith, this month it's, I know, uh, Mario, this month it's... Mega Man and all that stuff, and then you have to, you know, rather than having a, the same selection of people that you could ask to take part, you kind of have to, like, ask different people for every game and then hope everybody is in the mood for that game and then sync them up and then hopefully do it. And, you know, since Lowe the Puzzle is already doing racing games for all sorts of retro stuff, I'm just gonna let him handle that and keep doing that. Well, when I do it, I'm just gonna do Monolith for now and then something else later. Um, another thing I rolled out was the XP system and the Let's Quest system. So this was a pretty big and uh, slightly expensive thing I did uh, with a coding buddy. Um, we basically modified Phantom Bot so that there is a loyalty system in place so that people can basically be rewarded for watching the stream. So how the XP system works is... Um, there's a timer that I've set up that says, you know, every 15 minutes reward this much XP to everybody. And then if I do something, you know, particularly the game, like, I don't know, get A rank on a level or S rank on a level, then it'll add like manually as like a tech, depending on how often something happens. Um, and it's just a simple thing. And Twitch is doing that right now with some extensions, like awarding loyalty points. Um, and then 
When you get enough XP, you get a level, and then you can check your level by pressing exclamation point level in chat, and then the bot tells you, hey, you're, you know, a level 3 thing, and each level has its own name, so like, I don't know, you're a level 3 koala, or something like that. Um, people seem to like it, it's a little novelty thing. Um, turned out being super useful to me in ways I didn't expect, because, because this is all stored locally on my PC on a spreadsheet, and then I back it up. Um, the thing that's uh, interesting about it is that I can actually get insight into how long people watch on average when they jump into the stream, like new people. So like, for example, if I give 25 XP per 15 minutes, and then I have this massive spreadsheet that says, hey, here's a bunch of people, it's 25, then I can realize, oh, okay, people jump in for like 15 minutes and then drop out and never come back again. And anyway, that's kind of okay. Um, but it also helps um, that I can um, kind of see if any if I have lurkers, essentially, because something I've noticed is that there's a lot of people with really high XP that I have never seen in chat. Um, so I guess there is a lot of people who just watch and don't want to talk, uh, which is, you know, fine by me. I, I prefer if people were active in chat, but if people just enjoy watching and not taking part, you know, all the more power to you. Um, I don't. I was thinking of moving this to be an extension for Twitch, but that doesn't seem to have taken off. So I'm just gonna stick it to the bot part and have more control over it. Um, now another thing that the XP system is tied into is Let's Quest, which is another feature. Uh, and how that works is there's these little pop-up challenges uh, that I have to make in advance for a game. So for example, let's say I'm playing, you know, a fighting game. I'll like Tekken, and I'll put in a database of various challenges or various difficulties, like, I don't know, win two perfects in a row, um, do a 10 hit combo, kill the opponent uh, with a grab, you know, stuff like that. Um, and then, you know, when that comes up, people put up for voting, like, okay, let's vote, you know, do we want to accept this or reject it? And if it's accepted and I do it, everybody gets XP. If they don't accept, if they don't accept it, we move on to the next quest. If I fail it, nobody gets anything. And these are generally like big uh, experience boosts um, for tr for um, streams. Uh, they're also very hard to set up um, and can are really reliant on the type of game I'm doing. It doesn't work well for every game. Um, so I'm probably going to keep doing that. I haven't done it in a while. Um, I will probably return to doing it. Uh, Again, once a month, much like the races, uh, just to make it, just to keep it fresh. And probably like on a weekend so that more people can tune in. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be doing a few more things with the whole XP quest system. Um, there's some stuff in the pipeline and I'll be expanding on it. Like letting people do certain things depending on their level. Like if you're a high enough level, I'm going to let you like post a custom notification on stream. Stuff like that. Um, one other thing I did this year was uh, December, or December, I like to call it December, um, which is the month of fighting games, and basically what I do is I take half an hour and dedicate to a game, and I just um, play it off, show it off, and then move on to the next game, and on average it's four games per stream. Um, I try to theme it when I can, so like, okay... We start with janky places for one games, and we do the Blaze Blue series, then we do uh, lesser known but good games, then we do waifu fighting games, things like that. Um, I think this is the most successful thing on the stream channel because I've gotten a lot of follows, a lot of uh, engaged people talking, like let's like, just like the like, words, just a lot of user engagement. Um, so I will definitely be doing it next year because even with like the 90 something games that I had lined up this month, I still had to cut my initial list quite a bit. And there have been people just suggesting a bunch of other fighting games. So, hey, um, that sounds great. So the, the whole December thing is still going. It's going to last until December 26th, after which I'm bringing it to a close. Um, I'm trying to upload all, uh videos of it to YouTube like the day after. So if you've seen a VOD dump 
um, that's that's why. Um, but this is going to be a once a year type of thing for a month. So next year, if we do December, hopefully, right now it's looking like we will, um, we'll do a bunch of other fighting games. Other things on the Twitch channel. Like I said, this was going to be the biggest section. Um, gaming with Christian. So on Tuesdays, um, I played stuff with Christian, like uh, couch co-op. Uh, since he moved. Uh, back to the UK, uh, we'll be continuing these things once he's settled in. Um, and we'll, that's just going to be the long playthrough day where we're trying to uh, beat very long games. Um, I'm not sure where we're going to do co-op stuff. Right now on the list is trying to finish Resonance of Fate. Hopefully it works out. Um, since I have a side stream set up, I'll probably be playing on my PC and just he'll be either co-commentating on... The um, the voice chat. So yeah, that's still gonna be a thing. Uh, devs play. Haven't been doing too much of that lately, but I've done quite a few devs plays. Um, uh, so devs play started off with um uh, me and Christian playing through Alien Isolation, and then after that, I still want to do that. Uh, so Alien Isolation because the game um. It was a game Christian worked on, so we could talk about the development of the game and various other things. Um, so then I, I, I reached out on Twitter and asked people, like, hey, are you interested in talking about your video game um, on stream? Just let me know, hit me up, and we can talk about it. And we got a few games. We got uh, Assault, Android Cactus. Uh, we got um, a lot of uh, smaller indie games as well. Um, generally, it's been really fun. People have been extremely pleasant. Um, I think it's a good way to talk about and showcase games that aren't talked about too much because usually how it happens is um, you'll have a game uh, that's super popular and everybody wants you know some screen time with them and um, you know they don't really have the time for a you know, small time streamer like me uh, but a lot of smaller devs you know a lot of struggle to talk about their game online because of like so much competition so I, I i think they're more enthusiastic when somebody is ready to talk about it and so far it's been really um really fun to do um obviously people are passionate about the things they do and it's really nice to just listen um to somebody just talk about their work like what inspired it even if it's you know a simple game like you know a simple platform where people have a lot to talk about. If it's an interactive fiction game, people have a lot to talk about. Like, a lot of things inspire them. And I think the gaming industry in general just has a problem of not talking about uh, lesser successful games um, or just, like, lesser talked about games. Like, we only... The, the games industry only talks about super mega giga success thing and... Uh, super mega giga failure thing. So you know, like you're gonna have a million articles about how Battleborn or Lawbreakers has failed, and a million articles about how Cuphead is good, um, and nobody's gonna talk about. I don't know. Let's open Steam. Nobody's gonna talk about Ice Lakes. I don't know. <laughs> or um, there's a lot of games just being released like. Was Finding Paradise. Oh, that's dumb. that's actually a good game that everybody talked about. But no, um, there's a lot of smaller games um, that people don't talk about. Um, and I kind of want to use this slot to do that when I can. Maybe it'll pick up, maybe it won't. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but yeah, that was play is going to be a good thing. Um, and we're gonna do more of it going forward. Next thing, how to handle VODs. Okay, so, um, this is just a small thing. I've been thinking how to post videos on YouTube and not. Um, I've done a few full playthrough VOD dumps on YouTube, and I don't think it's really worth doing. I, I know a few people want to watch The Evil Within, um, playthrough so I posted that because people asked me for it and that's fine but I think in general I'm gonna save every recording on uh, Twitch and it's gonna be there on Twitch um, and I'm gonna record everything locally that I do as well just in case I want to 
for whatever reason, like slice something up. Uh, if there's a highlight or something interesting, and put it on YouTube. But in general, aside from highlights, I don't think I'm going to be doing full VOD dumps of streams unless it's something like December or if it's something more structured like uh, Devs Play, uh, Let's Quest, uh, Gaming with Christian. So the structured things are still going to end up on YouTube, the things that have like more control and are more specific about who is allowed to join in it. But the more casual streams, they're just going to you know stay on Twitch and if you want to watch them, please do so on Twitch. Um, content going forward, um, so, yeah, so I've been doing a lot of experimentations with, uh, how I stream games, because, like I said, I've been looking through metrics, I've been generally looking and comparing my channel to other channels, bigger and smaller, and how they do things, um, one of the other experiments I wanted to do was, um, see if I should do full playthroughs of games or if I should just play what I feel like, including like more varied smaller games. I also tried playing it with a strict schedule, I also tried playing stuff with a loose schedule. There have been all sorts of things, so here are some of my takeaways. There's really no point, and it might actually be counterproductive as a small channel to do uh, full playthroughs even if it's a new game. Um, the logic being, and at least this is what I've deduced uh, from everything, um, if I do a full playthrough of a long game, and that game is not jump in, jump out friendly, so it's not like, say, Dark Souls, which is very segmented and not reliant on seeing previous and later stuff. Like, you can jump in and assault Dark Souls playthrough and see any part of it and it'll be interesting. Something that's more like narrative oriented and it has a lot of stuff that builds upon. Um, doing a full playthrough of that is a bit risky because um, if people miss you playing a certain section of the game, then they will be less inclined to follow all other parts because they've lost their thread. So they'll be like, oh, there are VODs, I'll try to catch up to the VODs. They never catch up because it's a lot of time you know, to dedicate to something like that. Um, and then they never hop back in on watching those streams. And I've tried doing that, uh, even Yakuza, Blue Reflection, and some other stuff. And all those games had a lot of viewers at the start, but then they kind of, you know, people less and watch it less and less. Um, and I talked to people, um, as well to see, you know, what was the issue. And I did get the idea that this was the issue. So, going forward, uh, I will be streaming stuff for as long as it's interesting to me and to people um, that are watching. Um, I'm going to try and keep stuff varied uh, because it seems that when I do when I do lesser known games, like let's say for example Opus Magnum releases like on Early Access and I stream that. I'm going to get a little more people for that than I'm going to get for say Wolfenstein 2 releasing and streaming that. Why? Because when you have newer games and they have a massive boost of people interested in them. Um, usually what's going to happen is people are just going to go to check out the game and they're going to check the top person streaming that. And if they want to check out the game, they're going to get like the, some of the first results, they're going to watch that person. Or, you know, if somebody already has a lot of uh, viewership, you know, people don't really care that. There's a certain point after which people don't really care what you stream and just watch whatever you do, right? So, you know, if I, if my channel was pretty big and I streamed Wolfenstein, then it will be like, oh, okay, I already have a lot of people watching me. And then some of the people who sometimes watch me will be like, oh, hey, some somebody I usually watch is streaming something new, so that will reason for me to watch. I have, like, genuinely not noticed any boost from streaming popular or AAA new games. Um, I have noticed boosts from streaming niche or... Um, niche or like lesser known new games though um especially because um like fighting games bring in a lot of people um so obviously i'm gonna keep doing fighting games as well because i like playing fighting games um probably not as much during like december obviously but yeah so uh as far as strict scheduling goes i try to keep a strict schedule i try to do it loose and 
one of the problems was that I box myself in sometimes and be like, oh, okay, so it's, you know, start of August and for the third week of August, I want to play this on the Wednesday. And then that Wednesday would come and I'd just go, oh, I, I'm actually not in the mood to playing this, but I have to like force myself because I already committed. So going forward, how we will do it is going to be a semi strict schedule. So stuff like Let's Quest is going to be planned. Uh, stuff like Gaming with Christian is going to be planned. Uh, stuff like races are going to be planned, especially because I have to schedule it with other people. So there's no, I have to plan around it so people know when, to, when they hit free up their time. Um, but other things, everything in between is just going to be, hey, here are my regular streaming days. Um, I'm either going to tell you a day in advance or when I start streaming, when I'm streaming. Kind of like that, because I feel that works best for me. And I generally get too bored if I play just one game, so, you know, we're going to we'll do it this way. Now, um, let's see what else we have on this list. Guests and stream friends. Okay, so I want to shout out, give a shout out to everybody who has participated in streams. Like, either just dropping in in the free for all stream or just dropping in to give knowledge about a certain game. Um, I have a few regular people. I have semi regular people. I have people who have jumped, jumped in once or twice. Um, just thank you all for jumping in and contributing to the channel. It's fun to do, um, and uh, it's fun to do especially now before I have to police more who jumps in and not because you know at some point if the channel grows. It's, it's going to have to start being policing so I don't get anyone in because that's just how scaling with people works. Um, but it's, it's still fun. I'm probably always going to have some form of call-in guests because I bounce better off of other people. And speaking of other people, I've also been trying to grow the Discord server that goes with the channel. So if you want to jump in, um, the invite is in the description. Um, it's actually, actually, it's not on the YouTube channel. I should put it as a YouTube link as well, but it's also available on the Twitch channel. Um, it's it's semi-active. People talk about stuff frequently. Um, I use it mostly to coordinate about streaming stuff. I use it to like let people jump in as call-in guests. Um, um, and in general, as far as community goes, I'm trying to make a mood that... Um, is more inclusive and that doesn't have to deal with a lot of the uh, shitty fascist Nazi crap that's been going on in the world right now. Um, so if you want to jump in an area that's uh, uh, zero tolerance for that kind of garbage and that you want to just like hang or jump on streams or just really whatever, I usually post some work in progress stuff so like work in progress art with super graffiti or if I'm doing something with a project, I might mention it there, things like that. If you want to jump in, um, it's helpful. Um, and, you know, you if you jump in now, you get to say later on, oh, I used to be on this server before it had, like, I don't know, before the channel was super popular. You get to be one of those hipsters. But, yeah. Thank you all for watching. Um, 2018, going to be more streams, going to be more work. Um... The goal for next year, I'm just going to set an arbitrary goal of 700 followers. Um, I think it's doable. Again, followers don't really mean anything anymore, uh, but I don't want to do something that's as random as concurrent viewers as a goal. So we're just going to do you know, something we can build towards um, and have some tangible goals. So I, I think 700 is a decent number. So thank you all for the support for this year. Glad you enjoyed the LPs, the streams, um, and just in general stuff. Uh, next year will be another big LP, and until then there will be a lot of streams where I talk about game design, and as I play games or just get angry with your games. So yeah, hope you have a good day, and toodles, happy holidays.